I mean, just clearly having values and a, a, a mission and vision that's very clear for people to understand and rinsing and repeating the message week after week obviously helps people aligned. Today we're chatting with David Okaniv, the brains behind Type Forum. Have you ever thought online forums could be fun and conversational? Well, that's all David. He's transformed the way we interact with brands online. So if you've ever enjoyed a slick online survey or forum, you've got him to thank. Welcome to the Design Rush podcast. I'm your host, Bianca Mayer. Okay, so David, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, hey. Now, starting off, can you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself and what it is that you do? Okay. Um, well, let's just say that, uh, well, I'm originally from Belgium. I was born there, but I have kind of a British accent because my mom's British. Um, I was always into building things as a kid, kind of a Lego freak. Uh, when I left school, I actually uh, started a music career because I love to kind of build, well, write music and you know produce music. So I was really into kind of layering, the process of layering things. Um, but also whilst I was a musician and particularly my band, I also did like, you know, the website for the band, the logo. So I was always a bit of a, you know, just amateur designer. And when I was around 26, I kind of had to pack the whole music thing in because I moved to uh, Colombia uh, in South America. Uh, and yeah, there was kind of hard to just make a living on music. So I kind of switched to design, started a small studio called Fat Man Collective, basically just doing, you know, yeah, web design and branding design. Um, and, uh, but I lasted around four or five years. So no, not four, about four years in Colombia. And then I moved back to Europe, but I, did, I didn't want to go back to London. Actually, I was living in London before I moved to Colombia. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so I moved to Barcelona, uh, continued doing the, you know, uh, the, the studio work there, the agency work uh, until I met my co-founder. And then, I mean, there's a whole story around how Typeform came out, but basically, um, yeah, I'm, you know, to put it, to put it short, I'm a uh, product designer, builder, um, and I just love to build products. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So um, can you share the story behind your co-founding Typeform, uh, which you founded more than a decade ago, actually? Yeah. As I mentioned, I had this studio called Fat Man Collective, uh, which was in Barcelona. We were doing like web design work and I was sharing a co-working space with Robert Munoz, who eventually became my co-founder. He also had a, a design studio. And we just started collaborating uh, together on projects. And actually, he had a project for a bathroom company called Broca. Uh, they kind of manufacture like high-end toilets and baths, etc. If you if you if you come to Barcelona, you'll see a lot of them. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they asked us to build a form which would sit in their. They have this thing called the Roca Gallery, which is their kind of their, their show showcase gallery for all their latest innovation it's not exactly a shop it's more like a kind of museum of rocker stuff uh, and they asked us to put a form uh, in reception for when people leave to kind of do some data collection get their email get their name get get some feedback and what, what forth so um so instead of building a normal form we tried to build something different uh, kind of inspired by the film War Games from 1985. There's a scene where Matthew Broderick is interacting with a computer and it's really, you know, it kind of plays out like a conversation. So when I was a kid living in Belgium, um, uh, when, when we used to go to the seaside at the weekend, uh, this place called Knock is like close enough to the British coast to actually get the terrestrial signal from the UK. And they used to play this film on... Uh, on repeat most weekends uh, in the in the 80s, uh, the film War Games. So we would get the signal and I would just watch this film over and over again. I just love that film. So when we were tasked to, 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 to build this thing for Roca, like I thought, I thought about, hey, what's the best way to kind of interact with the computer? And this idea of like doing one thing at a time seemed like a better way than compared to answering a form as a laundry list of questions. So more like a conversation, 
less like an interrogation. Uh, and that kind of, you know, we did that for Roca and then we thought, well, this is could be a quite a good idea. Why don't we try and build a, a product out of this? We, we wanted to leave our studios anyway. We were kind of fed up of working for clients. We wanted customers. And so we just launched into, into this type form idea. And yeah, the rest is a, a long, long story. But <laughs> I think you get a gist of, you know, uh, how it all came about. Yeah, absolutely. That makes, uh, that's a very interesting story, actually. I love the fact that you kind of draw inspiration from um, your favorite movie as well, which is really cool. So, okay, what was it that sparked the idea to launch a no-code SaaS platform, would you say? Well, as I mentioned, it wasn't, first of all, first thing to say is like, we had no idea about uh, launching products. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't even know what SaaS was or even like ARR or any kind of SaaS metric. We really came just from the kind of agency design work. And this was, you know, we're talking about, you know, over, over 10 years ago. Uh, so we just, we just haphazardly fell into doing Typeform because of that Rocker project. So there was no real intention to, okay, let's build a no code platform because there's a need for this. We were just like, Hey, forms are boring. Uh, we can build a little backend that create can generate these cooler forms. So there was re really like very little intent in terms of, yeah, let's, let's build a no code platform. For what it's worth, yes, uh, we ended up building a tool that's super flexible and a lot of people use it for, for kind of workflows because you can kind of have a conversation and connect it, you know, via integrations to do things on, on, on other platforms. So kind of works as kind of your interface uh, for, for a platform. We've seen entire businesses like use Typeform as their front end, so or, or our, our products as their front end, let's say. Yeah, exactly. So what would you say some of the challenges were when you, you know, went from being like a web development agency over to like getting customers and having this platform and starting Typeform? And how uh, you well, <laughs> I don't know about, about challenges. I mean, it was just a great ride, obviously, yeah. like not having to, you know, have someone looking over your shoulder, making changes uh, on a deadline at like one in the morning. So, you yeah. know, the agency life is is kind of that. Um, so we were just, you know, I, the first few years in Typhoon was like really just a, a wild ride because we were kind of gr like growing crazy. It was a small group of of, of, uh, of well-knit people that kind of acted like a family. But clearly, like all companies, you know, that go through this kind of like early startup, naive, we're all a family uh, kind of vibe. Eventually, you know, the shit hits the fan as you, you know, you get bigger and, you know, you have to put processes in and, you know, you reach yeah. 150 people and, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard about the Dunbar, Dunbar number, but it's known that, you know, when groups, you know, take a certain number of people, they start to not have each other's backs and you know you start getting like factions and and you know it, it's just much harder to manage so that's when you have to put like better processes in hold people accountable and just you know all the non-fun stuff of of management right so that that's really more kind of the challenging part of scaling a company versus starting a company exactly so like in saying that um, what would you say one of the best processes were that you put in place um, initially during that phase? The best process that we put in which phase when things when you know as you said when we started growing <laughs> right I mean it, it's not just it's not just one thing uh, I'm just trying to think what what comes to mind I mean just clearly having values and a, a mission and vision that's very clear for people to understand and rinsing and repeating the message week after week obviously helps people aligned. I think obviously one of the biggest problems with companies as they scale is, is the loss of communication and silos crea are being created. So anything you can do to kind of keep the communication flowing and everyone on the same page means that you can all sail in the, in, in, in the same direction. Otherwise what happens is Everyone goes in their own direction and it's just very hard to move. I, I think success, the most successful companies are able to galvanize behind one clear message, one mission, and just, just go for it and work effectively towards that. 
it's 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 you know about focus i guess 100 percent. that's very well put so okay look it's clear that uh, type form saw super significant growth especially during the covid 19 pandemic um can you pinpoint a key moment or decision that really drove that surge well i don't think it's a decision really i think it's just our products were very um very relevant at the time well actually at the time i was um working on on a product called video ask which was our second product and that just completely surged during covid because suddenly people couldn't get face to face so this idea of being able to have face to face right. video interaction asynchronously uh you know we could really ride that wave um and also obviously typeform benefited because it's a tool for doing async communication in a way. I guess, you know, a form is that. So, so yeah, there's no particular decision. I think it's just everything running up to COVID led, you know, in a more remote world, all our tools are, are super useful. Yeah, exactly. It really is. So look, over the years, um, how has your role as co-founder shifted and evolved? So I had to change background because the connection wasn't great outside. Um, so... I was actually CEO of the company for the first six years, co-CEO with my co-founder. Um, we were kind of, well, not kind of, but very integral to the culture. So we wanted to be, you know, co-founder CEOs uh, and just be there to kind of build, build, build that out, like like most companies do. Uh, but also like most CEOs, it's you know it's a taxing job, and you know unless you're meant to be a professional CEO. Uh, there's kind of a shelf life on that. And uh, after six years, um, we both decided to step down. I think also, you know, the company reached a certain scale that, you know, the stress of just managing that and the, str and, and the expectation was just too much. Uh, plus, I wanted to get closer to product, not just, you know, managing product, but actually being in product, designing and coding product. So I stepped down. I started... Um, a new group inside Typeform called Typeform Labs. Well, it's now called Typeform Labs, but it's called something else before. Um, and we, we built um, our, our first product, which was Video Ask, which I mentioned. And uh, we've been continuing to build products. Like, for example, now we're building Informless. So as far as my role as co-founder in the company, well, my role is to, let's say, innovate, um, and also, you know, kind of be the roots of the company and be a reference to the past, you know, keep the company grounded, keep, you know, the leadership team grounded to, you know, the original, you know, vision of the company and, you know, just uh, try and put good vibes in, I guess. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. So, okay. Um, again, in saying that, like, what does your typical day look like as someone that's more involved with the product now? Literally, um, so my team is very small. It's uh, it's uh, five of us. So every day is just building, uh, building and designing features, talking to customers. It's like uh, ear to the ground stuff, just moving on our feet. Uh, not much process because it's it's early stage, so we can afford to kind of. Um, you know, take a lot of shortcuts so that we can move really, really quickly. And so, yeah, my day, yeah, it's really fun. It's basically doing what I love to do. I also have my leadership hat, uh, my leadership hat. So I have to attend leadership meetings, go to offsites. Uh, so some days it's it's that, and otherwise some days it's just being with the team and just building building out. Very cool. So, okay, I'm also interested to know, how do you juggle between making big picture, picture decisions, sorry, and focusing on the product direction. Aren't they the same thing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, mean, I guess the question is, how do you make like more like, like, yeah, okay, like, so like non-product decisions and uh, product decisions? How do you, I, I mean, let's just say that I, I don't intervene too much with the, the kind of decisions of the leadership team. Uh, because they're basically managing our main portfolio, which is uh, now Typeform and Video Ask. I'm really, let's say, like the mini CEO of 
Formless, which is a new product, or of Typeform Labs and Formless, which is a new product that, that we're doing. So, you know, I, I intervene when, you know, I'm needed and obviously I'm there and I, I give my input, but, you know, I also can fold back because we've hired a really good leadership team and, and, and so, you know, I, I don't have to be in, in every nook and crack. So that's quite nice as well. Exactly. Um, so actually just also saying that obviously you're very hands on with what it is that you do, of course, but you're saying basically now that you kind of hang back and let the leadership team, you know, take, um, you know, their own path on certain decisions and stuff, um, unless you're really needed. So like, what would you say are the top benefits or like the, the most or why it's so necessary for someone in your position to really trust the team? Well, I, I need this. I need the space to do other things, right? So, as I mentioned, I transitioned out of being CEO, and so my 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 role on the leadership team, um, I, I I'm not responsible for, let's say, one of the fu- like the organizational functions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I am responsible for 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 Typeform Labs, so that's that's my part. So really, it's just about that and building products, but. There's not, it's a small team, so you don't have all the overhead of trying to manage big organizations. So it's very easy. You just build products, really. That's yeah. that's really just it. That's the ultimate focus. And in the end, it's, you know, it's really what I always wanted to do. It's what I did when I first started Typeform. And then, you know, that grew to a certain size. And then, so I wanted to do something else. Luckily enough, like, I had the space to do it in Typeform. Otherwise, I would be somewhere else starting a new company. It's kind of what I like to do. It's the it's the, really the early stage part that really uh, gets me going. Um, and then you know sc- the scale the scaling phase is it's just another it's another type of challenge and problem that I'm maybe less suited to. Let's say. Um, so type forms conversational approach to forms is pretty distinct. So um, why do you think that your users love it so much? So I guess the first thing to say is. is for me, in any case, the best way to collect information is to do it conversationally or at least have an experience around that that, me- that draws the user in. So I think that's that's something I believe in, but we also have the data to show that we've run, we've, we've done tests where we've compared, you know, type form to, to, to let's say, a plain vanilla form. And it really does convert better. Like on average, I think Typeform's average completion rate uh, on the Typeform product is around, I I don't know what the latest figures, but last time I looked was around 60% on aggregate. So obviously, depending on the use case, I mean, some use cases uh, encourage like 100%. So if I'm going to offer, just a crazy example, I'm going to give away a million dollars, leave your your email address, everyone's going to fill it in, right? (laughs) But then there's other things, which is, hey, would you participate in this 10, this five minute survey? Uh, And that will be, you know, that will give lower completion rates. But on on average, we have around a 60% completion rate. So when you combine good form mechanics, which is conversationals, which is like one question at a time, and the experience around that and the design, you know, Typeform uses a lot of images and, you know, big typography, um, you know, a whole host of things to try and make it feel more like a presentation experience, a kind of laundry list of questions. Obviously, that's uh, that's what we believe um, creates better connections between, you know, B2B companies and their customers. So we kind of champion that. And a lot of companies have followed this as well, this example. Uh, but we always try to stay ahead of the curve. Um, you know, our formula is that it's a, you know, conversational experience or, or think of it as experiential data collection. Uh, and we use design as a tool to achieve that. Okay, very cool. So, I mean, do you have any insights on like the hurdles you faced building that platform? And, you know, that's also user friendly for both tech pros and for newbies. Yeah, I mean, I can just go back to the to the very start. You know, we spent before we even launched Typeform, because as I mentioned, we were we were Typeform came out of two design studios, design and development studios. 
So we were kind of playing with the Typeform idea after that uh, that project I mentioned uh, for Roca. We were playing around to build the ultimate form experience. What we built for Roca was one experience. It did have, it was a bit tight for me, but wasn't the final final thing. We actually spent like almost a year just trying to get that right. And the challenges of trying to make a one question at a time form and the way the mechanics all, all move so you can also scroll through the form, everything. Those were, that was not, that was super fun, by the way, but it was also very challenging to to get to that. Ultimately, that is what uh, made Typeform successful, was that initial form that we created. We put something out in the market, say, hey, your forms can look like this, and forms had never looked like this. Mm. And that was basically what made us just grow really, really quickly. Very cool. So... Um, how do you keep user experience and design at the heart of Typeform, especially as it grows and diversifies? That's been a bit of a challenge, to be honest, because, um, you know, you start a company that's very kind of very design orientated, very, uh, let's say, driven by, by, by emotion, you know, a small group of people, we're just doing it. And then you have to scale that and then you have you have to bring in kind of more rational decisions. And, you know, you start having a blend of people in the company that uh, are, you know, there's more creative types, which are more impulsive. And then you have more rational people, which are all about, you know, measuring everything, uh, validating every decision. And it's kind of like, how do you get that perfect blend between heart and mind? And that's been a bit of a challenge. Um, I think... At the point where we kind of like the middle point of the company where we started to kind of transition to be more rational because we were too, let's say, creative, um, we kind of overswung a little bit. And we've been in the, I would say, in, in, in the last two or three years, obviously, it's probably hard to notice from the outside, but from the inside, this is kind of what we see. We've been kind of trying to like wrestle the needle back to the middle. So we have a real good balance between, you know, doing things on impulse and then, you know, we want to measure them as well. But, um, yeah. you know, we if you just do everything on, you know, we're not going to do anything unless we, we it's fully measured and validated. You're just going to be very slow. Sometimes you can take decisions just based on instinct. I think that is what being design driven is. It's, you know, you're driven by a, a, an idea, a dream, and you try and you try and execute it. And then you prove whether it works or not. But if you're, if you're just kind of, if you're asking yourself like, hey, what could, you know, what could, could work? And then you, you do it from a more kind of data perspective. Yeah. I think you're missing a big part of what it means to actually build something original or, or, or innovative. So, so we try to, to, to balance it. One of the things that, that we're trying to do right now is actually ingrain it into the culture, you know, have, for example, a value, which is, uh, uh, driven by design um, uh, or, or, or well we haven't finalized the wording but something like you know driven by deci design data informed like those kind of things to say uh, we really care about design but we, we really care about you know uh, doing the studying behind it and making sure that everything is is well optimized let's say exactly yeah I love that um that little slogan that you just said as well like it's it's really tough i think for businesses to find that balance especially maybe initially for startups as well but i mean you guys aren't really a startup anymore so um, i think that nowadays um yeah. design is just so important like the bar just keeps on raising higher and higher and if you if you don't come across if you don't have a strong brand if your product doesn't look really really nice have a great experience people are just gonna find uh, to work with another company which has that experience so you know i can there's countless examples of this but you know that that's what we believe in anyway i mean of course there are there are there are soft there are companies that don't care about this but are, but are very successful but let's just say they're just very good at the other part um, we're, we're more we're, we're good let's say at the design part you know that's in our heart so that's where we follow exactly are there any specific ways that you use data to do, to um, track your designs and if they're successful? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything is measured now. Um, yeah. 
you know, everything goes into product metrics and we see how many people are using the feature. Uh, um, again, it depends what you're doing, right? If it depends the feature, also depends the product. Right now on, on, on Formless, the new product I'm building, we're not doing any research apart from just talking with customers all the time. So we, it's kind of on the fly research. We get feedback, we build, we adapt, we present. Uh, you know, we, we share internally at Typeform what we're building as well to get validation and then we ship. Uh, but, you know, with the Typeform product, I think that the process of, uh, of designing is a bit more, is longer. There's, there, there's more validation built into everything, everything we do. Um, but yeah, it really depends the complexity of the feature and on what product it is. Okay. Now, two months back, you actually introduced an AI-driven form builder. Um, yep. Can you take us behind the scenes of that creation or its creation rather? Yeah. Um, so think, thinking back about when we originally built Typeform and the, um, the War Games video, that is actually a, a conversation with an AI. So Typeform is actually an expression of trying to reproduce that without actually having an AI. So we built things in Typeform early on, like logic and branching. So you could say, uh, you know, if the user says, says this, then go here and say this. So that yeah. it felt as conversational as possible. Um, AIs, you know, large language models have reached such a point that actually um, we can integrate this into uh, the idea of Typeform now. And we didn't build this into, into Typeform because crowbarring AI into the Typeform conversation as it is uh, would be too much of a, uh, of a big thing to do at the moment and too much of a big change. So we decided to, to take that challenge on in, in Typeform Labs and experiment with what would uh, a form look like if it was like fully conversational. That means if I give an answer, then then it reacts in real time with with a comment or some quick jo or a joke, depending on what tone of voice uh, you give it. Uh, or if you ask a question to the AI and you've trained the AI with your own data, it will be able to answer questions. So um, Typeform is very deterministic. Uh, the Typeform.com product is very deterministic. You set up your flow with your questions and you can branch away to different questions. With, with Formless, it's completely open. You basically, you, 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 you give it a prompt in terms of what you want the form to do. You tell it what key info you want to collect. And, uh, and, and, then, the, and, and then the AI, it, and then the AI just works out the rest. We built an interface for, for, for interacting. This interface brings in images. Um, and it's, it's also the interaction is, kind of suited more for, for that kind of question and answer. It's mostly open-ended questions. Uh, and then another big component is you, you can train the AI with your own information. So you can paste the uh, URL of your website or your help docs, and that will train the AI. So if someone else has a question about your company uh, during any, any form that you set up, uh, you'll be able to answer it through the form. So that's really like a big step change compared to what Typeform Typeform.com can do today. Uh, so we're just at the start of this. We're, we're, we're in closed beta at the moment, uh, but we're planning to go into open beta in uh, beginning of October. Amazing. That's super exciting. Yeah. Formless.ai formless formless if you want to, um, to sign up for, for the beta. By the way, uh, just... Formless is a fu funny thing because it's kind of a play on words. We wanted, it's kind of less of a, it's a form, but it's kind of less of a form. So we wanted to almost feel like it's not a form at all. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're super excited about, about releasing this and the potential of this. So, so yeah, we're just working on it and hopefully we'll scale it up from here. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's super, like I said, it's super exciting. That's a really cool feature to be integrating. So, okay, how is this AI feature shaking up the traditional way of making forms, would you say? Um, well, actually, you know, Typeform is also doing a bunch of AI things. Sure. Um, so you can create a form with AI um, in order to create a Typeform. So you can have a prompt and then uh, Typeform will build the form for you. Um, 
it doesn't do all the stuff in terms of like the form flow is 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 completely dynamic it still has that predetermined kind of flow to it so i would say that that you know we're the first ones to shake it up and there will be people following track we've already seen a competitor um doing stuff uh we saw them early on in our in our alpha which they got into and they're building something similar maybe it's like they're maybe focusing on a different vertical but we're already seeing that so you know hopefully we can again be leaders in shaking up the form space we did it with type form and you know hopefully we can do it with formless we also did it with video ask you know one of the first player to do like you know video base forms um so yeah we always try to stay ahead of the curve and and you know use the latest technologies to make forms as human as possible absolutely i mean they do say that imitation is the greatest form of flattery so yes that and uh, but it also takes market share but (laughs) (laughs) that's fine um you know always show your 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 backside to your competitors don't don't copy innovate Exactly. I, I, I strongly believe that too. So, okay, what were the major challenges or wins in weaving this advanced AI tool or this advanced AI into your tool? Well, as I mentioned, uh, with Typeform, we use AI in a whole bunch of things yeah. uh, from creating uh, your form to soon to be analyzing your results. So you can ask questions of your data and get natural language sounding questions. So you know, integrating AI into Typeform makes total sense. What we've done with with Formless is a bit different because we actually base the product around AI as opposed to use AI in Typeform to make things easier. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, AI is the foundation of, of, of Formless and everything is built around that. So... When you're talking with uh, when you're talking with a form on Formless, you're talking with the AI essentially. Sure. On Typeform, you're not quite doing that. It's a as I mentioned, it was a predetermined. It's a predetermined script. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm asking is, is like, were there any like specific challenges or really awesome breakthroughs throughout the processes with the AI? Mostly challenges because uh, working with language models is really difficult. They're really good and well for example um gpt gpt is uh is is what we use uh, the current version is 3.5 there's another version called 4 which is available to test but it's not really scalable yet so we've built um formless using 3.5 as a language model but we've struggled a lot to make it work for our use case it's been very difficult um it's just trying to get the prompting right so that in all use cases it works. I mean, this is just a very technical thing to explain, so I'm just kind of brushing over it. But I think, you know, uh, let's just say the capability of language models to do everything you want it to do and not hallucinate is is still limited. But it's it's getting better as the, the as language models get better. So you know, already GPT four is more capable, and there will be more versions and other language models that that will be able to make it much easier to build things like formless on top of AI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Um, how do you see this AI tool fitting into the future of data collection and like human AI collaboration? Well, I guess that's kind of our bet, right? I think yeah. the point of Formless Labs was to experiment and get ahead of the curve and create innovation. Um, uh, funnily enough, today, someone in our all hands ask, is, uh, is, is Formless going to replace Typeform? Uh, which is a good question. And honestly, I don't know the answer to that, but it really depends on how the market evolves yeah. um, or how's, how user experience evolves. Right now, people are just used to using forms in a certain way, but let's say in five years' time or in 10 years' time, uh, are people really going to give over information in the same classic ways that they, that they do? I would bet not. That's why we're building things like Formless and there will be other things we build which look to the future. So, um, you know, if, if, if Formless becomes a new type form, it will be a result of the, 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 the market having moved on, let's say. Um, so let's see. let's see. Let's see what happens. We're just trying to stay ahead of the curve. 
there's still obviously, you know, most of our customers are on, on, on Typeform. We, we serve over, we're getting close to 200,000 paying customers. So, um, you know, there's still, there's still a long way to go. And, and, and Typeform's packed full of very useful features that Formless doesn't cover yet. So, yeah, it's going to be a while. But let's see. Let's see. Okay. Now, just looking a little bit more into the future, um, given the fast-paced SaaS world, what trends do you think are on the horizon? Yeah, I mean, I guess we're back to the, the, the thing that AI is going to accelerate every SaaS tool and every company that doesn't integrate will stay behind, I think, because it just... It just gives superpowers to the yeah. to, to the user in terms to move faster and make their job easier, uh, and you know it makes building some features quicker as well because some of the heavy lifting you can do with AI. So, I mean, for example, um, we just launched a, f- a feature on Typeform, which I'll, I don't know if it's launched yet, but it's coming up soon. Um, this is on Typeform. You can switch the language of your form, and just the AI will work out all the translations on the fly. Amazing. Um, yeah, so actually that, that comes that comes out of the box with Formless as well. So, you know, just that, if, 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 if you wanted to build that yourself, you would have to hard code all the translation. The, the user would have to hard code all the translations that they want for the languages that they can be bothered to support. So, or, yeah, or, or we could automate it through, through, through Google, but obviously every time user makes a change on this the form we have to build systems to kind of re-update everything when it's all done on the fly then you know it's just much cheaper and easier so yeah ai can help on both sides building features faster and giving more values to users okay amazing so now as we know more folks are blending home and office work um how do you think online forums and chat like interactions will adapt well i think for starters um, data collection using voice, I think, will start to be uptaken more. Um, we on Formless, you can already use voice input, and I say people will use it more because, you know, if you're away from an office environment, then you can do that. If you're in an office with people, you're not going to start talking to your computer. So, I think that's one example how it can change forms. Um, I think that's the only example that comes to my head right now, but I can think of more examples uh, maybe later. Cool. So other than your translation uh, feature that you're adding in, are there any other cool upcoming projects from Typeform that you'd like to tease our listeners with? Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, another one is uh, being able to, um, to talk to your data, essentially ask questions like, uh, what are people generally saying about uh, the quality of my product? And you get natural sounding answers back. That's something that we'll be doing across all our products. We're building, we're building it into that into into formless as well. Uh, it just makes sense, you know. If people want to read through, people can't read through each of their response. They want to get an overview and ask an AI to trawl through the data so they can ask questions. Uh, that's one thing. One thing that we recently released is obviously the, the, the ability to, to build type forms. This is on the typeform.com product just from a prompt. So build me a lead gen form that uh, for my uh, beauty clinic that will collect leads and uh, show people a bunch of new products, A, B, C, D. Uh, and then it will build the, the, the structure of the form for you. Um, same thing on formless, but it's again, it's not predetermined. You, you write a prompt and then the AI just hosts the conversation. Amazing. Okay. Well, that's super exciting. I mean, it's crazy to think that it's come this far, huh? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah well. This is going to be integrated properly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ah, it's just going to get more interesting. Um, and obviously it's super relevant for type form because you know, we, we, we want to make this as conversation as possible. So, you know, AI can obviously do that. You can't, you can't program with logic every single permutation of how a conversation will go. You can't do that exactly. without AI. So. Yeah, 100%. Well, David, that's all I have for you today. Again, thank you so, so much for joining us. Really, Pleasure. this has been super insightful. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have a great day. Yeah, and, you too. Uh, Thanks a lot. Bye. And, uh, yeah. See you all on the interwebs. 100%. Bye. Ciao. And that's all for today's Design Rush podcast. 
If you're looking for a web or software development company for your next project, we're here to help. Visit designrush.com marketplace. Our marketplace offers a curated selection of agencies that can provide the solutions you need to turn your dream into a reality. Again, I'm your host, Bianca Mayer. Stay curious and join us for the next episode. Thank you.